Welcome back to my channel. Today I have a very exciting video that I've been working on for a couple months. We are going to talk all about personal style, tips on how to find your personal style. I've got a lot of notes, a lot of different categories, and I feel like this is a very comprehensive way. If you're finding yourself a little bit stuck, hopefully this will help. Sorry, it's a little echoey in here, and I do have the fan going in the other room. It's like blowing into here, so it's hopefully the audio is good. It's like 100 degrees in New York City. <laughs> I was originally gonna do it in our bedroom where it's like all cutesy. They started doing construction. So we're in the office, we're trying our best. I just really wanna get this video out. And like, look at my top, isn't this so cute? I had to look cute for the video, obviously. Like I can't not look cute while talking about personal style. And you may be wondering, how am I qualified? I'm overqualified. I feel like I have a very strong sense of style, sense of self. I've pretty much had the same aesthetic my entire life. First of all, I think you need to reframe how you think of the phrase personal style because it's such a buzzword phrase that I think people are thinking like too much into it. It doesn't have to be this all encompassing word or category that defines you and your life and, and, and everything. It's just your clothes you wear, right? It doesn't have to be that deep. The phrase personal style, I feel like is a very intimidating. Instead, we wanna focus on what makes your closet a wearable wardrobe. I think finding your personal style is extremely overwhelming and people kind of get paralyzed with like information overload. So when I say personal style, we're simply talking about how to refine your closet to make it individual to your needs. Something that is wearable and functional and fashionable. So my first category, we are going to define your lifestyle. We want our clothes to work for us, not against us. So you're gonna ask yourself, what do you value most in clothing? For most people, that's comfort. I know that that's what it is for me. I, first and foremost, I need to be comfort, comfortable. <laughs> Look at your, the clothes that you already own and ask yourself, which clothes make me feel good in my skin and which clothes make me feel like uneasy. And we could see comfort kind of in two realms. It could be that the garment itself is uncomfortable. Like wool can be very, very itchy. That's not comfy. Polyester personally makes me very sweaty and I hate the feeling of it on my skin. So for me, that's not comfy. It also could be the cut of the clothing. Like I consider this revealing. Maybe some people don't, but this to me is revealing. I usually wouldn't feel super comfy in it, but for some reason I'm like, okay with this cut. But that's another thing. It could be the cut of the clothes. Maybe it's showing too much skin. Maybe you're showing not enough skin. Maybe like this is modest to some people and they're like, I wanna show more skin. Showing more skin makes me feel comfortable. So those are like the two categories of comfort that you have to think about. And also think about your lifestyle in the context of where do you work? What are you wearing to work? We spend a lot of time at work. Do you work at, like when I worked at Target, I knew I needed good jeans in my wardrobe and comfy red t-shirts that were breathable. That worked for my lifestyle at the time. I needed good quality socks. Now that I work at a clothing store, my needs in the clothing department are very different. I can wear like cute clothes to work and so I usually wear like a button up. That's what makes me feel comfortable at work because I can still move in it, but it still looks like put together. Also think about what are your hobbies? Are you running in the mountains, you're probably gonna need more athleisure than me. <laughs> my hobby is thrifting and getting coffees, right? So something like this fits my hobbies. <laughs> my hobby is looking cute. So yeah, define your lifestyle and, and really think about what your needs are for clothing because you want it to match. And that kind of leads into my next topic, which I think is the most important. If you take anything from this video, please take this because this took me a very long time to learn and it's something that I'm still fighting with <laughs> sometimes it like takes over and that is killing your fantasy self okay I have talked about the fantasy self in my decluttering videos before and it's something you need to be very aware of when discovering your personal style so my fantasy self is wearing sequin vintage prom dresses every day pinning my hair up with like a vintage scarf and like skipping around the city in high heels in reality I would be so uncomfortable in that I would be crabby because I would be sweaty my feet would hurt. I cannot stand uncomfortable shoes. So that is my fantasy self. My, my real self is probably wearing a pair of like low top sneakers, a nice pair of jeans and a cute top, accessorizing with, you know, jewelry. That is my real self. My fantasy self, that's not real, okay? And as much as I love those things, it's just a waste of time and money and effort and resources <laughs> if you dress like your fantasy self, if you're chasing that feeling of your fantasy self. Your fantasy self can help you influence
influence your day-to-day -day style, but you shouldn't buy outfits that realistically you're just never gonna wear. It's kind of like buying those well, what if outfits, like, oh, I should buy this really nice dress because what if I like go to an award show someday? Or like, what if there's a wedding? Well, is there a wedding or not? Do you have a wedding coming up? Then like, yeah, buy the fancy dress. But if no one you know is getting married, maybe we can skip on that. Like maybe that's the fantasy self creeping in, the fantasy self goblin, like taking <laughs> control of your brain. So the way that my fantasy self kind of like translates into my day-to-day -day style, I do love vintage. So instead of wearing a vintage scarf in my hair that I necessarily probably wouldn't like the style of, I like to tie vintage scarves onto my purses. I think that's a super fun way to accessorize. So I kind of incorporate my love of vintage into those small ways instead of buying like a shit ton of vintage dresses that I'm just not gonna wear because they're not comfortable. My next topic is resist the urge to buy. This is also a really hard one. <laughs> so if you're watching this video, you're probably already like hating all of the clothes in your closet and are like feeling that I have nothing to wear kind of dread. But the truth is there's probably a lot of pieces of clothes and outfits in your closet already that you really like. So I would say that the first step is to go through your closet and try to find those pieces that you really like, that you feel confident in, that you feel comfortable in. And this isn't a declutter. Do not go into this with the mindset of like, I need to declutter so that way I have room to buy a brand new wardrobe. That's not what we're trying to do here. Because then if you do that, if you get rid of all your clothes and you rebuy a whole new wardrobe in about two, three months, you're gonna, you're gonna repeat the cycle. So what we need to do is we need to find the clothes that you already own that you like. Regardless if you're feeling that absolute hate for all your clothes, you're still wearing outfits, right? <laughs> you're still getting dressed every day and I bet you there are some things, whether that be just super simple basics that you do like. So you're gonna go through your closet, you're gonna find the pieces that you really love, just like your favorites. Like if you had to wear your absolute favorite clothes every day, pick out those pieces. What do I wear the most? What do I gravitate towards? And then ask yourself, what do you enjoy about it? Is it the fit, the color? You wanna really analyze your favorite articles of clothing and see what they all have in common. So for me, I love a lot of collared button up shirts. So I have like five of those. I, I love that style. Um, I like a mixture of bright colors and muted colors. Like I like to wear color. So I know that about myself. I don't want a totally sad beige outfit. <laughs> like that's cool if you do, but I like to wear color. And I also, when I get dressed, I love to accessorize. Those are things that I know about me just from kind of like analyzing the stuff I already have. Buying without purpose is it's just gonna lead to disappointment. If you're buying clothes without knowing what makes your wardrobe feel like you, your closet is just gonna end up messy and jumbled, filled with clothes that are really lacking in tension. So we're just gonna pull out those favorite pieces. What do they have in common? We're just gonna analyze. We're just gonna take it in. We're not gonna rush to buy stuff that's like brand new. We're not gonna go rush thrifting. That's another thing. Don't just go thrift a new wardrobe either because even though it's cheaper and it's thrifting and it's, you know, secondhand and that's all great, we still don't wanna over consume thrifted clothes. So we're just gonna sit in it. We're gonna sit in the clothes we have. We're gonna sit in that wardrobe and just feel. What is our wardrobe saying to us? What do we enjoy? What do we not like? Okay guys, the hair has to go up. It's like a million degrees in here. So my next tip is do not fall victim to the decor. In my summer trends video, I talked about all of the different cores, the Barbie core, coastal cowgirl, that kind of, like all ballet core, Barbie core, cottage core. It is all very exhausting. We don't wanna rely on niche aesthetics. Those niche aesthetics really only serve a handful of people. It's very few and far between that someone finds something like cottage core and is like zero to 100. They love every aspect of it and they're so, they're like the TikTok girly and it fits them and it's great and they love it. That's rare. You are not going to find a niche aesthetic that is going to encapsulate who you are as a being or who you want to emulate or what you want to dress like. I hate to say it, but it's not going to happen. <laughs> and I feel like I fought with that one for a very long time because TikTok, TikTok fashion is not real, right? TikTok style is not real. It's entertainment. They're cute. All the girlies are cute. It's just not realistic, especially for the average day person. And so we really want to just kill that. Do not, do not. <laughs> And the problem with the cores is it's just very hyper-specific. People who feel drawn to these niches find themselves buying all of the trendy pieces that fit into the core, then find the pieces they bought are considered out of style or chuggy within like a matter of months. So Barbie core sounds cool and fun because it's the movie of the summer and it's like pink and girly, but then you might spend like $500 on all pink items and then in two months kind of like wake up and realize like, okay, that was like fun. That was kind of like a costume party 
party for two months and now I have all this pink stuff and I don't really enjoy it anymore. When you could be kind of like, I feel really good in hot pink. Like I look good in hot pink. Let me buy one top that is hot pink in a cut and style that I like that I know I'm going to keep for years and it'll be versatile and it won't be just trendy for the summer. It's in a fabric that I like. It's like a good linen. It's breathable for summer. It's okay to be inspired by trends and by core aesthetics if they fit into something you're enjoying and if we shop them reasonably instead of making it our entire personalities. Like I love hot pink. I love girly things and uh, hot pink is a color on me that I feel looks really good. I have hot pink clothes and I really love them. I thrifted a hot pink, a button up. That's like my signature style, but I thrifted a, a button up. It's like neon pink and I, got, I have had it for three years and I thrifted it, which is awesome. It was like six bucks. I love this thing. I wear it all the time. So that is a smart way to buy an aesthetic if you are feeling inspired by it. Aesthetics and the different style of cores can help you identify what sparks joy, but we want to avoid being a carbon copy of a niche. Again, only going to lead to disappointment and you feeling very lost in your personal style. So instead, we're going to try to identify what in that niche is making you feel inspired. Is it the feminine dressing of ballet core? Maybe you really enjoy the more like relaxed silhouettes of like the coastal grandma aesthetic. It could be like the muted earth tone palettes of cottage core. Figuring out those elements within the niche, within the, the aesthetic that you like is a great stepping stone to building your personal style. This next tip was maybe, dare I say, life-changing <laughs> to how I viewed my personal style and aesthetic. And that is you do not have to buy slash wear everything that you like. I'll give you an example from my perspective was uh, last year Year, I followed a lot of maximalist creators, maximalist dressing, just to name a few, like Anna Golka Yepes and Sarah Campo. I love following them. It's very over the top maximalist, these like wonderfully layered outfits, super creative. It's like really artsy, artistry kind of dressing. And I love it. I love the outfits. I think it's so fun. However, these are not outfits that I would feel comfortable in. And I tried. <laughs> I tried to be a maximalist girly, okay? I would spend like hours in our spare bedroom which is where my closet was. Playing with clothes and trying to make my outfits like the most loud, maximalist, fever dream looking. But it wasn't working because I, at the end of the day, I didn't feel comfortable. Like it was just, it, that's not my style. Personal style isn't necessarily what you like. It's what you like and what you feel comfortable in. I also love really, really boho dresses. I love like the flowiness of them. I love how pretty they are. But when I wear them, I don't feel like myself. I just like a more classic structured silhouette. So it's learning that you can enjoy other styles without having to indulge in them or wear them. I love a coastal cowgirl look. I love the cowboy boots. I love that boho chic. It's not for me and that's okay. You don't have to wear everything you like. And that's why I'm like a huge fan of playing dress up because with, like I said, with the maximalist trend, I was able to take items that I already owned and like pin them and layer them and tuck them to recreate these maximalist outfits and then realize they're not for me. No harm done, no money spent. I got to play around, be a little creative, and I came like one step closer to really solidifying my personal style. So it's again that notion of being inspired by people and aesthetics. We don't want to copy and paste. And it's also helped me when I go shopping or thrifting. Thrifting is shopping, but you know what I mean. To be able to, if I like an item and I'm like, oh my God, like this is so cute. I can look at it and say, okay, is it cute? Because it would be something that I would wear. What would I wear this with? What outfits would I wear this with? You know, if it's a top, what kind of pants, what shoes, how would I style it, accessorize it? Think of all of these elements and then I think, or do I like it because it's just objectively a pretty item? And really having that distinction helps so that you're not wasting your money and, and buying stuff that you won't wear. You can go, that's a really pretty top. That's a really gorgeous, beautiful, beautiful article of clothing, um, but I would never wear it. And so therefore I have to politely pass. And a good segue from that, from talking about maximalist fashion maximalist fashion creators is good style isn't always maximalist. Having good style does not equal having the craziest flashiest outfit. In my experience, I felt so solid in my personal style until I started watching more YouTube and TikTok fashion. That's when I got lost in it a little bit and then I was able to like get it right back. I really started to 
compare myself to other girls on the app thinking I wasn't dressing like cool enough. I started to feel like to have good style, you had to be on top of all the trends, buy into every like Y2K, cool girl, like Gen Z kind of tropes. And then I would go and buy those pieces and I would try to style them and then realize I felt so uncomfortable in my own skin. I didn't feel like myself. I spent so much money on things that are now listed on Poshmark because I wasn't staying true to myself and trusting my gut. And so I am such an advocate for anything can be stylish. There are so many different ways of dressing, different styles that I really love and admire. And it's really, it comes down to confidence. If you feel confident in what you're wearing and you feel like it kind of emulates your vibe, you are going to look stylish. If I were to dress in Y2K cool girl, what I thought was like cool girl, I would not look cool girl because <laughs> I would be uncomfy girl. <laughs> so dressing for myself and you know, wearing stuff that makes me feel confident, then I look like a cool girl. Cool girls are happy and confident in wearing whatever the hell they want, okay? So if you thought this was gonna be like a video of like, you need to wear X, Y, and Z, not at all. And I think that is why it's hard to find your personal style because you cannot just follow a how to be fashionable, how to be stylish, you know, YouTube video. You can be influenced by those. You can, you know, draw inspiration from those. But at the end of the day, you, you just, you can't copy anybody. You have to figure it out for yourself. And that's why it is such a hard task. Good style really comes from that true confidence, that confidence in knowing who you are, believing who you are and trusting yourself. And that cannot be replicated. That has to come from you. Unfortunately, doesn't it suck? Like you actually have to work on yourself to have good style. It's so much deeper than just putting on clothes. And maybe that's silly if you're not kind of like into fashion, but it, it really does. It comes from within, it comes from right here. <laughs> your style is more than your clothing. And what I mean by that is you need to look at everything else in your life. It kind of like how you want your clothes to work for you at your job and you want them to work for you doing, during your hobby. You also want to look at how do you style your home? How do you style your hair? What kind of makeup do you like? If you were to go like pick out a duvet cover for your bed, which one are you drawn to? Because I think there's parallels in that. My duvet cover, well, it's a quilt right now. It's a plain white quilt, kind of with like Swiss patterns on it. I don't know how else to explain it. And then my bed is like a Scandinavian wood kind of looking frame. My rug is bright colors in like stripes. And interesting enough, I feel like that really aligns with my personal style. I love wearing white. White is one of my favorite colors to wear. I love a more classic cut, the bed frame. It's like a more classic bed frame. And I like pops of color, which is what my rug is. So analyzing your surroundings is kind of a good way to get an idea of what style you like. Like again, I wouldn't pick out a really boho looking bedspread and I also wouldn't dress very boho. So I don't know, something to think about. If you like minimalist decor, you probably would really like a minimalist wardrobe. Like what kind of architecture do you like? What kind of coffee do you drink? I know it sounds silly. You're really taking inventory of everything you like as a human. If you had a billion dollars, what kind of mansion would you buy? It's silly, but it also plays into what kind of clothes you would wear as well. Cause very rarely are people like all over the place. My likes and interests and, and what I find enjoyment in are kind of in the same realm. So that's just kind of a random thing I thought of. My next kind of useful tip is to find your color palette. Finding a color palette for me was so important because your color palette isn't what you look good in. I know we're seeing all these TikToks of, it's an MLM, did you know that? When they take the scarves and they pull it to, I don't know, so you're glowing and you're a winter, you're an autumn, you're, you're, you're true spring. I get it, there's some merit, and then I also think it's kind of silly. So I like to approach it as your color palette isn't what colors you like or what colors you look good in. They're colors that you feel good in. It all comes down to how we feel. So for me, I would say no colors are excluded. Don't follow the, the spring, autumn, winter, summer thing uh, because they will like exclude colors. <laughs> we wanna wear colors that make us confident. So you could go like the more analytical route of trying to find your like true tone and analyze your skin and what colors, whatever. I think it's kind of gimmicky, but if that's something you wanna do, maybe it is helpful. But for me, I don't, I don't have to think hard about it. I just, it's a yes or no. It's really 
easy. So if I go to the store and I put on a pale yellow, it's a no. I don't like it. It doesn't do much for me. I don't enjoy it. Oranges, typically a no as well. I like bright oranges, but like salmon peach colors, I usually don't love them. I love red. I love hot pink. I do love blues, emerald green, white, pure white, not cream. I love wearing black. This is also something super easy to figure out without spending money. You can either go through your closet already and like I said before, put on a shirt, put on a dress. Think about how the color is making you feel because I've had to get rid of some things. I don't like magenta. I don't like wearing magenta. I had a, even a pair of magenta Converse when I was in high school. I did not wear them. It's just a color that it makes me feel icky almost. I can't even describe it. I just like, oof, like when I see that color, even if it's the most gorgeous dress in the world, if it's that specific shade of magenta, I know I will never wear it. And I know if I do wear it, I'm gonna have a bad day. It's weird. <laughs> that magenta is cursed to me. Think about which colors will curse your day and don't wear those. <laughs> Maybe that was dramatic, but I really do feel like colors are like make or break it. And also find your safe colors. Like I said, pure white and hot pink. Those are probably my two safest colors that if I wear that color, I'm gonna feel so good. That was all I had written. I did think of one more little thing to tack on at the end here. And that is to stop using Pinterest. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I hate to do it to you, but you need to stop. <laughs> Pinterest, like I said, consuming TikTok fashion, consuming YouTube fashion, the old good old Pinterest is what nearly broke me. It just ruined my sense of style for like four months. I just did not know who I was. And also Pinterest is so notorious for making you feel like you have to buy shit. I would say you're better off without it. I would say get a magazine subscription. I am such a fan of magazine subscriptions. I get Vogue at the moment. I should really subscribe to a few more. It's just a more like, yeah, you're being influenced, right? you're being pushed product, you're being pushed trends at such a slower pace though. You're getting one magazine a month that you can look through and be inspired by and then you put it away. And if you wanna look at it again, it's the same things that you've already consumed. I feel like TikTok and Pinterest, it's just so rapid. Like you can scroll through 500 TikToks, a thousand Pinterest posts in like half an hour. And that's just like igniting your brain on fire to overconsume, to feel like you're not good enough, to feel like the clothes you own are not good enough, that you're not cool enough. These apps put so much self-doubt into our minds. Still occasionally go on Pinterest. Uh, I like to use Pinterest if I'm getting dressed and I don't know what shoes to wear. Oddly enough, I'll type in like A-line linen dress, O-O-T-D, and then I'll kind of see and then I'll gauge it, you know, gauge my out outfit from there. But that's very rare. I maybe go on Pinterest once a month. I just don't recommend it, especially if you're struggling with your personal style. I think you're going to be extremely disappointed. I think it's going to leave you even more lost. And that's what these apps want you to do. They want you to spend more money. They want you to be self-conscious. I would just say maybe take a pause. Like maybe if you're a chronic Pinterest user, maybe take a break. Like, you know, you don't actually need it. Like I said, at the end of the day, it is all about confidence. You can wear literally anything as long as you feel good in yourself. And if we're chasing these Pinterest girlies, these Pinterest outfits, we're never going to feel good because you cannot recreate someone else's outfit to a T. Even if you do, even if you buy every single item that they're wearing, every single clothing piece, the exact same one, you probably still won't think that you look as good as them. So it's a waste of time. It's a waste of money. I would say detox from Pinterest in my personal humble opinion. In conclusion, you probably know your personal style very well. You may just be doubting it. You may just not think it's cool enough, but you probably already have the building blocks. You just need to kind of hone in and fine tune it. Everything I said in this video, go analyze your closet, go analyze what you already have. Personal style is truly about letting go of societal pressure to like dress a specific way and learn how to trust yourself. It's all about trusting yourself. I know it's so corny, so cheesy, it's all about trusting yourself and confidence. So that's all I have for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a blast to make. I've literally been typing this up for like three months because I really wanted to do this video justice. I wanted to do it right. And I really wanted to get all my thoughts out there. Hopefully this helps you. Best of luck. I have so much empathy for people struggling with their personal style. It sucks, especially if you're into fashion and you like getting dressed and you're just, you know, you're into that space. It can feel very overwhelming. You're losing a bit of your 
myself. I just love getting dressed. I love fashion. I love doing my makeup so much that if, you know, when that gets taken away from me, I feel a little sad. So I definitely have empathy for you. Best of luck. You can do it. So that's it for me. Make sure to subscribe and like my video. I really appreciate it. I'm trying to get monetized. <laughs> it is so hard. So thanks for that if you do. Um, otherwise, I'll see you in my next one.